first pitch of the game. Booyah! Gary Matthews Jr. takes Jamie Moyer out. Matthews, fifth home run of the year, first career leadoff homer. Bottom one, Rogers facing Randy Wynn with every camera in the building pointed at him, and he gets Wynn swinging. Bottom two, Rogers facing Scott Spezio and Schooler. Rogers retired the first 11 batters he faced. Bottom five, M still down, one on for 42-year-old Pat Borders, pokes an infield single to short, scoring Jose Lopez. We're tied at one. Bottom eight, Rogers in a jam. Randy Wynn up with the man on the corners. Win grounds one to third, but Alfonso Soriano drops the ball on the transfer, trying to turn two. That would have ended the inning. Willie Bloomquist scores the go-ahead run. M's up two on Rogers, seven and two-thirds, six hits, two earned runs. Two. Top nine, Eddie Guardado in with a tying run on second. Gets Richard Hidalgo to fly out to center to end it. And in a skinny, scant two hours and 19 minutes, the game is over. M's win it, 2-1. The Mariners designated three-time All-Star second baseman Brett Boone for assignment. Boone has been just struggling this year, hitting just 231 with seven homers. And Mr. Boone proved that there is crying in baseball. You know, I've gone through a lot in this city. I a lot of great times. And uh, we've scuffled a lot. Last year to have. And it, uh, <laughs> I feel like a baby. <laughs> well, they're happier at Fenway these days. Socks in first for newly named All Stars Sunday. If only the Jays would go away. But crack in the armor appeared to be Roy Holiday on. All-star-like numbers at Fenway. And sure enough, in the first, Johnny Damon gets to him for a single. That's a 19-game hit streak for Damon. Later in the inning, two runners on. David Ortiz at the plate. He's an all-star. RBI single. The left brings in Damon. Ties it at one. Just assume if I say a Red Sox name, he's an all-star. Okay. Jays up 2-1 in the second. Bronson Arroyo against Russ Adams. Adams hits the RBI single to right. Here comes Orlando Hudson. Blue Jays take a 3-1 lead. And that was 20 for Roy because this turned out to be a holiday weekend. Jason Baratek. Jason well, you know, even all-stars strike out two. Bottom third, same score mark. Oh. Bell Horn against Holiday. Six strikeouts for Holiday. Gave up one run in eight innings. His AL best ERA down to 2.33, but had to get out of trouble in the sixth. Bases loaded. Trot Nixon pop up to deep center. Vernon Wells on the case, and that is a great throw to get Edgar Renteri out at home. He is meat at the plate thanks to the rope from Wells. Nice tack from Greg Zahn as well, and Holiday is happy about that. Bottom nine now, bases loaded. Scott Schoenweiss against Damon. Blue Jays up 5-2, and this guy needs a comeback in the worst way, and he's not going to get one. Damon pops up to Hudson. Blue Jays win at 5-2. Holiday's 12th victory. Jays now 8-3 against the champs this season. Yankees and Tigers, Nate Robertson, 2.89 ERA at home this season. Filthy good stuff. Nate Robertson, 0-3 and, and 7, starts at home because his boys only give him 2.7 run support a game at home. Top four, one on. Robertson facing Gary Sheffield. And Sheff bringing it. Robinson Cano plates it. Sheffield's 58th RBI of the year. Yanks up one zip. Two batters later, Robertson facing Bernie Williams. And Sheffield has his mind on to be a thief. Trying to steal second. Pudge Rodriguez, perfect throw to get Sheff at second. Watch this. Placido Polanco doesn't even need to move his glove. Pudge has 11 gold gloves, most ever by a catcher, and a wicked arm. Perfect throw. Bottom nine, two out. Rodriguez on second. Mariano Rivera looking to close it out against Craig Monroe. Yo, Craig, you got skills, man, but Mariano has not allowed an earned run since May 6th. Grounds out to A-Rod to end the game. Nate Robertson pitches the one-run complete game loss. Yeah, Mr. October was pretty good in other months, too. On a July evening in 1971, Reggie Jackson's 520-foot launch off a Tiger Stadium light -like tower was the highlight of the night at the 71 All-Star Game. And for that game, the last All-Star Game Detroit hosted, that's saying something. There were six homers in the American League win, all by future Hall of Famers. Jackson, Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, Harmon Killebrew, Johnny Bench, and MVP Frank Robinson. The names on this year's American League lineup don't have quite the same ring yet, but given time, maybe some Hall of Famers in there. Jason Baratek, one of four Red Sox to be voted in by the fans, his second All-Star game. Rangers first baseman Mark Teixeira making his first appearance at the All-Star game. His 22 home runs lead the American League. 
the Orioles' Brian Roberts making his All-Star star debut as well. Roberts joins Veritex, the only two AL players to never trail in fan voting. Alex Rodriguez is your American League third baseman. It'll be his ninth All-Star appearance, second straight at third after five straight at short. Miguel Tejada is the American League standard at short these days. His third All-Star game hit 323 with 19 homers and 60 RBIs. Your outfield, Johnny Damon makes the team for the second time. Ed Ichiro by 57,000 votes. That's the tightest among all positions. And despite missing time on the DL, Vlad Guerrero makes his sixth All-Star appearance. 350 average, 14 homers, 47 RBIs, and a lot of votes got him in. Manny Ramirez, ninth time at All-Star, 20 homers, 70 RBIs for the run-producing machine in Boston. And DH's teammate, Big Poppy, David Ortiz, the leading vote getter in all of baseball with 4.14 million votes. You know, if you win the World Series for the first time in 86 years and then take over first place, you get a lot of All Stars. That's what the Red Sox did. Ortiz is the first member of the Red Sox to be the leading vote getter. Veritech, the first Red Sox catcher to be voted as a starter since Carlton Fisk, the original Pudge in 1980. Johnny Damon and Manny Ramirez, the first time the two Red Sox outfielders have been elected to start since Freddie Lynn and Jim Rice appeared in the same team in 1979. You're starting pitchers for the AL team. Mark Burley and John Garland of the AL Central leading Chicago White Sox. The AL's two most recent Cy Young winners also be on the staff. Boy Halliday of the Blue Jays and the Twins, Johan Santana. As we mentioned, the Rangers' Kenny Rogers at 9-4 also made the team. More now from the guys from baseball tonight and Marlins. Luis Castillo, 30-game hitting streak at Chase Stadium, longest in park history. Top one, no score, one on for Castillo, facing Victor Zambrano, grounded to Miguel Cairo, great stop, wacky throw. Ball gets away from Jose Offerman, Juan Pierre scores, Castillo extends his hitting streak. Back to D-Train, five and one this year against the Mets. Trying to be the first national leader with 13 wins, bottom one, Mets down one zip, bases loaded, one out, Will is like, yo, I got this kid. Facing David Wright, who was just wrong, said Willis, if you're not having fun, I don't know what to tell you. Chris Woodward, please. Willis only allowed two runners after the first inning. Bottom three, Jose Reyes, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the heck up out of here. Lord is ERA to 1.89. Next up, Mike Cameron, next down. Then came Carlos Beltran. Broke the bat on that one. Ground to short, Alex Gonzalez getting flossy on the bare hand grab. One, two, three inning for Willis. In the ninth, bottom nine, Mets down three zip. Willis hits Mike Cameron above the knee. Cameron would stay in the game, but you know, that's got to shake a pitcher up. I mean, Willis was probably a little flush. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Uh, struck out wow. Beltran look and then Mike Piazza right off the leg of Dontrell but he said you know what even the good bounces go your way when you're going good now two outs last chance for David Wright by the way Dontrell also singled and scored and got Wright to fly out wrong to center Dontrell's fifth complete game fourth shutout of the year fish win at three nil Roger Clemens has pitched well enough for 13 wins as it was the Rocket thrown for just his seventh Sunday against Cincinnati but that's Roger Clemens, the pitcher. Don't forget, the Rocket can hit this year. 281, three RBIs, the last of which was Brad Ausmus there, make it 4-0 Astros. Clemens, pretty good on the hill as well. 0.23 ERA and six road starts. Just ask Ken Griffey Jr. on an 0-2 count, make it 0-3. Top seven, here's Ausmus leading off the inning. And Ausmus will ground out to Felipe Lopez in short for the routine 6-3 put out. Now, why didn't we show you that? Because Ausmus hits eight. He says it's a little embarrassing hitting in front of Clemens. Well, usually I'm hitting in front of him, and I've just made an out. So it irritates me to no end to, to make an out and then watch the pitcher who's been in the American League for 20 out of 22 years step up and drive a ball into right field. Ah, oh, Brad, you're just blowing smoke up the old man's, you know what. Oh. Or maybe not. Maybe he just, he's, he's Nostradamus. Clemens deep to right, the ground rule double. He went two for three on the day. And again, he, he can't pitch. Bottom seventh, here's Jacob Cruz in a full count. And well, that was Jacob Cruz. Clemens didn't allow a run in seven, struck out four. So Tim Kirkson, you go and train or rock it? Preston got all swole, all huffed up. 14th homer of the year. Rockies take a 3-2 lead on the third solo home run allowed by Mulder. Bottom five, Larry Walker batting. Runner in first and second, grounds to first. Rockies try to turn two. The return throw to first gets away from Jason Jennings. Abraham Nunez scores from second. But watch it again. 
As Walker steps on first, he pushes Jennings on the left shoulder, which causes the ball to get away. Cardinals pulled it within one. Walker would eventually score to tie it at four. Bottom nine, Nunez at the plate with Yadier Molina in second. Singles to right. Molina comes all the way from second to score. Big up respect. Rockies fall to seven and 33 on the road. The worst road start in the big since 1982. Cards with a better record than everybody but the White Sox, who wrapped up in Oakland. That's Barry Zito, Mark Mulder's old teammate. Just four wins in his last 21 starts. Zito against Frank Thomas in the fourth. That's a bomb pop. Oof. Smoked by the Big Hurt. Nine of Thomas' 14 hits this season have been home runs. Top six, 2-0 White Sox. Zito against Thomas again with two strikes. Oh, 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 oh. The hook will bring you back. That's one for Thomas. That's one for Zito. Watch it again as we track the parabola. Wow. Watch it one more time. Thomas couldn't figure it out the first time. Maybe you can after three looks. Zito, two earned runs, five strikeouts in eight. Sixth inning, Mark Burley against Eric Burns. Comebacker to Burley, but the throw is in the left center field, which is not where you want it. Eric Chavez scores 2-1 Sox. Still in the six, 2-2. Two -two. Jason Kendall up, single to right. 3-2 Oakland. They went at 7-2. Burley gave up seven runs despite his... Four in the first half. Here's what Lou Pinella thinks. You know, actually, it's gone fairly quickly. It really has. How about painfully quickly? How about second half maybe not going as painfully? Maybe Aubrey Huff facing Joe Mays, top three scoreless. Mays to left, Lou Ford. My bad. Misjudges it, misses it. Carl Crawford scores. Devil Rays go up one zip. They're going to go 82 and 0 the second half of the season. No, wait a second. The Devil Rays. <laughs> Bottom seven, Mike Redmond facing Scott Kazmir, tied at two. Redmond singles to center. Torrey Hunter scores. Devil Rays 4 0 against the Yankees on the road this year, 4 and 30 against everybody else on the road in 0 and 6 with an ERA over 8 in 11 career games 10 starts against Cleveland top one scoreless well here's why with 2 on Victor Martinez respect singles sends his hitting streak to 14 games Coco Crispy scores one zip drive two batters later 2-1 two, two zip Indians Ben Broussard getting medieval on kids three run shot his ninth of the year bottom three O's down 6-1 AL All-Star second baseman Brian Roberts at the dish. Roberts. Holla at a player when you see him in the street. 14th homer of the year. Cleveland 24 and 1 this year when scoring six runs at least. Bottom six, 7-2 tribe. Eli Marrero flies to right. Ronnie Belliard. Nice running. Got it! Tribe called Quest. Wins it in Baltimore. 9-4. The AL should be calling the NL Junior. The non-DHers have not won an All-Star game since 1996, only won three since 1988. Now, there was that tie in 2002, but who's counting? Mm -hmm. So, if you go by recent history, announcing the National League All-Stars is more like telling you who won't have home field advantage for the World Series, but we do it anyway. The senior circuit has senior leadership at the plate. Catcher, Mike Piazza making his 12th All-Star appearance. First base, Derek Lee making his first appearance. And the guy who was recruited to play basketball at the University of North Carolina. Kid's been balling and putting up fat numbers for the Cubs all year. Holding down second base, the Dodgers' Jeff Kent. Batting over 300 in his first season in L.A. And taking part in his fifth Midsummer Classic. Hot man at the hot corner, Scott Rowland. His fourth All-Star appearance. And he is one of three Cardinals getting the starting nod. At short, his teammate and a surprise first-time All-Star. David Eckstein been putting in work and will hold things down in the infield. Another Cardinal, Jim Edmonds, will be holding it down in the outfield. The human highlight reel is making his fourth all-star appearance. Also in the outfield, the big man in the Big Apple, the Mets, Carlos Beltran, bringing the noise in his second all-star appearance. And rounding out the outfield and the National League starters is the Phillies' Bobby Abreu, who's also putting on a show in the home run derby. Any debate which NL first baseman should be starting, I mean, Derek Lee is just straight ridiculous. You know Albert Pujols can do it, and, and 342 for Pujols, 21 homers, 66 RBI. Any other season, that's got to be the first base starter, except when the guy 
from Wrigley is hitting 383, 25 jacks, 67 RBI. Lee becomes the first Cub first baseman to be elected starting an All-Star game. We already mentioned Rocket and Willis among the NL starters. Joining them, the Mets, Pedro Martinez, and 12-game winners, Levon Hernandez of the Nationals and Chris Carpenter of the Cardinals. The NL staff combined record 53-14, and 14, and the highest, highest ERA is Carpenter's 3.32. Carlos Beltran, first Mets outfielder to be elected as a starter since Sterile Strawberry in 89. Jeff Kent joins A-Rod and Reggie Jackson as the only players to be elected starter with three different teams. And for the first time since 97, the NL starting outfield will not feature Barry Bonds or Sammy Sosa with more. The BBTN delivers a smooch. It's all very, very nice. Bottom four, 2-0 Nationals. Ryan Drees against Todd Walker, who lines it to center. But Brad Wilkerson making national headlines, if you will. Bottom seven, 2-0. Drees against Jeremy Brunette. Deep to center, Wilkerson. The man is a national treasure. Bottom nine, two outs. Is this the entire highlight? I may. Right. Brunitz against Chad Cordero, the newly named All-Star. Brunitz bloops it into right center. That'll keep the inning alive. Aramis Ramirez against Cordero. We were so not catching that. Two-run shot, his 18th of the year. That's a matter of year. national security right there. Yeah, Cordero's first blown save in 27 chances. Nice. Keep the theme going. He gets to keep his All-Star selection. Glendon Rush gets Brian Schneider to hit a double play ball in the 11th, but Todd Walker threw it away. Runners advance later in the inning. Wilkerson at bat pounds a double to deep center. That's going to bring two Nationals in. They go up 4-2. We're not done yet. Bottom 11. 4-3 now. Runners at the corners. Todd Hollinsworth. A ball he probably shouldn't have pulled. He broke his bat. You know, when things go right for the Cubs, they go right. Uh -oh. And then they often... That's national crisis right there. Yeah, they often go the other way. <laughs> Top 12, Brian Schneider against Sergio Mitre. Schneider with the solo shot. Nationals get to 50 wins faster than at any time in franchise history. Pirates and the Brewers extra scorecards required, please. Jack with a flip to Castillo. Creativity <laughs> excelling up the middle. Jack Wilson robbing Brady Clark. Bottom third. Brewers down 2-1. It's Ricky Weeks at bat. Ricky Weeks just called up last week, getting used to this major league thing. A little something for the people. Two-run shot to left. Third homer, seven RBIs in a three-game series against Pittsburgh. Brewers up 3-2. It's his fourth homer of the season. Sixth inning now. Brewers get five runs in the sixth. They go up 8-2. Clark at bat now. Two outs. Deep to left field. But that's where Jason Bay operates. At the wall. Brings it back. And that'll end the sixth. We go to the seventh. Pirates scored three straight, down eight to five. Castillo at bat against Ricky Batalico, and Castillo muscles up. Darrell Ward scores ahead of him. Pirates within one on Castillo's sixth of the year. So ninth inning now. That's a base knock to left and an RBI. Umberto Cota scores. Pirates up 11-8. Sanchez three at four with two RBIs, including his first major league home run. Bottom nine, Brewers down 11-8. Jose Mesa on the mound. Chris McGruder, your hitter. Fly ball to left center field. Jason Bay blinded by the sun. Oh, Clark scores. Brewers now down by two. Still the bottom of the ninth. You take a breath. Jeff Jenkins at bat. Base is loaded. One out. Jenkins hits it to third. Pirates can't pull the double play. Lyle Overbay scores. Brewers now within a run. So Damian Miller at the plate with two outs. Mesa gets him. Pirates hang on to win at 11 10. Biggest comeback of the season ends their five game losing. Jason Michael spent nine hours in police custody early Sunday following an incident outside a Philly nightclub. Police say Michaels punched a uniformed officer and wrestled him to the ground after Michaels refused to comply with the officer's request to leave the area. Michaels faces charges of aggravated assault on a police officer, simple assault, and reckless endangerment. He's due to appear in court Thursday. He'll remain in uniform in the interim, which Sunday meant the Phillies ESPN game with Atlanta. He did not start. Let's take a closer look at Citizens Bank ballpark there. Okay. 329 down the line in left field. 369 to the power alley, or at least so it reads on the walls, Stu. In the fourth, those scored two outs. Runners on first, Ryan Howard giving back to his community. Second on the season for Howard. Philly's up 3-0, but John Smoltz is wondering, how was that a home no. run? You know what? Those dimensions aren't right. I don't care what anyone tells you. Uh, those dimensions are not right, and I don't know how they're going to keep pitcher, pitching here. It's going to turn into Colorado. It is a little on the dinky side there in Philly. 
top eight. Braves trailing 3-2. Runner on first. Andrew Jones doubles into left center field. Mike Lieberthal will get the throw to the plate, and it gets away. Sort of takes the drama out of the whole play. Marcus Giles slides in safely. Game Built tied well. at three. I, I tried. I did what I could. Top nine. Three all. Billy Wagner in. Ryan Longerhans leads off with a triple. That's how you get things started. Four of the Braves. Six hits on the night. Went for extra bases. Longerhans would score in a sacrifice fly. So the Braves go up 4-3. Same score. Two outs in the ninth. Chris Reitzman gets Tomas Perez. Braves get their first three-run comeback of the season. Giants and Padres, Jason Schmidt is straight off the meat rack. 3-0 with the 1.23 ERA his last three starts. Bottom 3-1-1, Schmidt getting some help from the D. Damian Jackson, fly to deep left. Moises Alou got his PhD. Player hater degree. And then he got knocked in the head. Check it out again. Moises conks his head. Great catch. <laughs> Happy birthday, Moises. Yeah, 39th birthday, and that's what you get. Not a spanking, but a head knock. Game stays tied at one later in the inning. Two on pods. Jeff Bloom at the plate with the sacks. Jack doubles into the right field corner. Ryan Klesko, Brian Giles score. Pods go up 4-1. They had five extra base hits in the game. Next batter, Khalil Green. And kids just straight beaten up on Schmidt. Khalil slaps a singer to left, single to left. It was a stinging single. How about that? a stinging that? single. Yeah, there you go. Mark Sweeney, Bloom score. Schmidt's day, four innings, six hits, five earned runs. Padre win the game. Two million dollars in its first week. I didn't go. Yeah. Guess the controversy didn't didn't really affect it. So I didn't go either. So that's another like ten bucks right there. Top plays: Blue Jays, Red Sox. Kevin Moore fouls out. Look at the ball go. We've done a disservice by not getting her name. We've had some time. We're better than that. She's just ball girl to us. Sign her up. Number nine, Montreal Alouettes, Ottawa Renegades in overtime. They came back from 23 down. This just in, the ball girl's name is Kelly. Number eight, Saturday, Astros, Reds, ball deep. Ken Griffey Jr. turning back the clock to make the great diving catch. Jr. looking like Kelly in the outfield. <laughs> Number seven, Saturday, Wimbledon women's final. Venus taking on Lindsay Davenport, trying to stay alive, but she hits it into the net. Davenport has never beaten Venus at Wimbledon. The longest match. I think six is next. Final history of Wimbledon. That's a big play. The longest match in the history of Wimbledon for the women? Yeah. Number six, Marlins Mets. Carlos Delgado, deep. Cliff Floyd, deep and up. What a play! Outstanding play by Cliff Floyd. Listen to this crowd. Number five, Sunday, California. Surfers break a world record. 40 surfers rode a single wave at the same time, breaking the previous record of 38. Not much of a wave, to be honest. Braves, Marlins, number four, tied at five and 13. Little flare to right. That'll touch down for a hit. Cabrera around third. Throw to the plate. Estrada bobbles in. Cabrera is safe, and the Marlins have won it. Number three, Wimbledon men's final on Sunday. Roger Federer with the ridiculously crazy powerful serve to beat Andy Roddick. Federer wins his third straight Wimbledon championship in straight sets, 6-2, 7-6, 6-4. He is the winner and still the winner. Big ups to the man who cut his ponytail. Dos Indians Red Sox, Johnny Damon on a hit streak. Jody Garrett not helping him out. That is flat out pilfering it off the grass. And number one. Back goes Gonzalez. He's going to get it at the wall. And into the wall. He makes the catch. Goes over the wall. He wraps Phillips in the hole. Diamondbacks win it 7-5. to five. five games on the 4th of July. Two